Okay, so let's continue. So our next talk is going to be from IBM. Uh, Mike Rappaport is going to be talking about other space for namespaces. Something like that, yeah. Uh, I'm working for IBM Research for a couple of years now, and the, our current research field is how to make containers more secure. And uh, since uh, other space isolation is uh, Ultimate protection method since uh, the invention of virtual memory. We are trying to see if we can make use of MMU and the uh, address space isolation inside the kernel mappings to make uh, the environment in Linux kernel more secure and uh, particularly container engines and the container users. Uh, and uh, one of the assumptions is that uh, vulnerabilities are inevitable and uh, there always will be some hole somewhere in some system calls that doesn't take proper care of its edge conditions that uh, this can be exploited. So uh, if we can try to create uh, restricted address spaces for execution of some of the kernel functionality, then uh, a vulnerability uh, that exploits uh, exploits something in such a restricted address space we st will still make an attacker life harder to get to other kernel uh, code and data that is not mapped in the restricted address space. So the first example of restricted address space in the Linux kernel is PTI, of course. Uh, it's more restricted for users than for kernel, but still a uh, the page table of user space processes ceased to, continue to contain kernel mappings at some point because of some problems probably you know of. And there is also ongoing work in similar direction for KVM. Uh, Oracle uh, developers are working on uh, creating a restricted context for execution of VM call and VM exit and trying to avoid the uh, uh, in mapping sensitive data in the context uh, for VM guest mode. And the AWS proposed uh, creating uh, areas that are mapped only in the context, context of certain process and are not mapped in, in the rest of kernel page tables. And our group is targeting container security uh, where the entire system call interface is the attack surface and the major is isolation primitive is the Linux namespaces. So we've been thinking how can we use MMU and the page table and restricted address spaces in order to make namespaces safer. And the idea we've been working for last couple of months, weeks, is to assign a page table for namespace. Before that, we tried uh, something that we called system call isolation, which was an attempt to run a system call execution in very restricted address space. Uh, it was kind of a continuation of a PTI approach. We took the PTI page table, we added to it, to it some uh, minimal uh, mappings uh, necessary to enter system call, and then uh, uh, the actual system call execution was running without any of kernel uh, code or data mapped. It faulted a lot. It was uh, not so fast, as Peter said. Uh, it kind of worked to the extent I could measure, could run micro benchmark, uh, but after I did it, I realized that it's not a solution that's going to fly. And uh, what we intended to do is to use these page faults to verify that access uh, to kernel code is safe and in the, this way prevent possible ROP attacks. Uh, so whenever a system call tries uh, to execute new function, new functionality, it faults. Uh, this causes a page fault. In the page fault, we can run some verifier that ensures that the call is performed to known a symbol and not to the middle of some function. Uh, so mm -hmm. when the access is considered safe, we are mapping the, mm -hmm. 
a required page into the restricted mapping. Uh, if the access is not safe, we kill the process. And again, uh, uh, it didn't uh, really fly. It was just uh, our first attempt at looking into using page tables for improving uh, container security. The other one we tried, uh, it was a simple patch about uh, 200 diff, diff, about 200 lines to create special mappings that uh, we called uh, map exclusive. Uh, so memory region in a process uh, is considered exclusively owned by that process and isolated from the rest of the system. Uh, for instance, it can be used to store secrets uh, in memory. Uh, one can M up uh, such region uh, with uh, that flag and then uh, read data to that region and this data won't be visible neither to kernel nor to other processes in the system. So this red, uh, this, this is pointing to is already 40 emails and probably will grow more. One of the, one of the suggestions that appears on this red is instead of using MMAP, M advice and protect and such, uh, it may be worth uh, using FD backed memory and create a dev exclusive memory as, was, as uh, somebody suggested or dev secure memory as somebody else suggested. And then uh, this, it will be a character device that will uh, behave similarly to MF, MFD. And uh, in this way we can uh, reduce complexity of uh, such exclusive mapping, of such exclusive mappings. Uh, because uh, uh, the MMAP method of the chart device implementation will take care of uh, extracting the right memory pages from a direct map and uh, making, them, making them visible only to processes that own the file descriptor. Another huge problem with uh, creating uh, regions of memory with different properties that uh, normal direct maps uses is a fragmentation of direct map mappings. A direct map is usually mapped on, with uh, larger pages. It can be one giga or two megs on the x86. And whenever we extract some small memory region from the direct map, uh, we split this huge map, pa pa huge map page mappings if, of the direct map and the uh, there is nothing that can return them back, like uh, there is THP and compaction for user space pages, there is nothing like that for kernel mappings. And the last one that is not yet upstream and probably won't be any time soon, but still we are working on it. Uh, uh, for in the container world, namespaces create isolation by means of uh, virtualizing some of the kernel objects and making sure that every namespace owns part of a, a, the kernel objects it's using. So uh, we are trying to create page table for namespaces and then the objects that are anyway private to that namespace will be visible only in the page tables in, of the processes that uh, found in that namespace. So for instance, it will be something like that. If there are buffers, devices, sockets, whatever kernel structures that belong to a particular namespace, they have their own page tables, they will be mapped only in that page tables and they will not be seen by the rest of the kernel. For network namespace, which was uh, our first uh, guinea pig, uh, network namespace uh, creates independent network stack for each uh, instance of a namespace. All the objects in that stack are anyway private, and most of them never cross namespace boundaries uh, except uh, SKBs, right? Uh, so we created a prototype that allows to map uh, objects in particular net na network namespace in its own page table, and uh, made these objects invisible in other page tables of the kernel. It was pretty simple, also 
kind of 200 lines diff. It, noted that it's already working, but uh, we've added the PGD to the struct NetNS. And then uh, we are forcing uh, that PGD to be used by every process that joins the network namespace in clone and share set NS. And uh, we also pose a restriction that uh, every thread of the same process should live in the same network namespace. And uh, we did a proof of concept with several objects. Uh, the next step we did is uh, we created extensions to page allocator and uh, slab caches to allow allocations that also private to certain namespace. And the uh, pages or objects allocated with kmalloc and the uh, friends are visible only inside the page table of the process that on behalf of this process, these objects were allocated, something like that. And we also took special, some special care for objects traversing uh, context boundaries like SKB. Uh, so whenever, whenever SKB traverses namespace boundaries, it becomes unmapped in previous owning namespace and mapped in the next owning namespace. These are more or less memory management implementation details that we are using internally for now. We added GFP exclusive for pages, slab exclusive to mark the entire slab cache as uh, exclusive, and uh, it implies a GFP exclusive for every allocation of new pages for that particular slab. And uh, we mark pages that uh, allocated in such manner with a new page type, which most probably will be frowned upon, but for the prototype, it works just fine. So uh, for now, we stick with that. So whenever page is allocated uh, in such with a GFP exclusive, we call set memory not present uh, in the page allocator, and uh, that makes the page disappear from direct map, and as such, it won't be visible in any kernel mappings of other processes. And whenever it is freed, we return it back to the direct map. And again, we are returning to the same problem of fragmentation of direct net mappings, which need to be resolved. And also, we restrict such allocations to happen only when we have uh, actual uh, MM. This won't happen in case thread or something like that or in interrupt context. Uh, with KMALEC, most of this is already implemented for our POC. It's so scary, I'm uh, frightened to look at it myself. Uh, and we were able to get as far as to allocate struct SOC and uh, struct TCP and struct SKBuff with uh, the modified version of KMALOC. And I still was been, have been able to have a TCP traffic inside the namespace that used all these uh, bells and whistles and uh, protection methods. Now, it appears that it's not an easy task. Probably it will take more than a couple of months and maybe even more than years. Uh, Touching MM code is uh, really difficult because uh, you can get bug reports uh, you wouldn't anticipate, and it uh, actually affects every Linux user. Uh, there are open questions we have about how this feature could be used uh, beyond network namespaces. So it could be user NS, uh, UTS, and network uh, UTS namespace. Uh, maybe others, and uh, it's really unclear at that point whether security benefit with, will outweigh added complexity and uh, performance uh, penalties. So uh, as many of us, I'm running out of slides. Thanks a lot. Thank you, let's thank the speaker. Questions? Elena? Uh, 
I have many, but I'm going to ask after. Uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, with the network namespace installation, what happens if I uh, create a new network namespace, then open a socket in a network namespace, pass that socket via like follow script or passing uh, to someone outside the namespace, and then that process acts on that socket? Like, does that work? Does it suddenly have to like switch the page tables in the outer process, or do you just prevent passing sockets around? We don't support it for now. <laughs> Okay. I, I, well, I thought that uh, we should remap it in the new namespace. Uh, and can you talk a bit about what the like what the overarching goal here is? Like, are you uh, trying to um, just pr uh, um, mitigate arbitrary reads, but not prevent arbitrary writes? Or uh, we are not trying to mitigate it, any particular issue. We are presuming that we'll have vulnerabilities, and we're trying to uh, restrict kernel mappings as much as possible so that uh, everything that is not strictly needed will be unmapped. And then it would make attackers' life harder, at least that's what we think. Any more questions? Hi. Have you considered using memory tagging instead of namespaces? Should uh, achieve the same goal? Uh, namespaces are pretty much given for containers. So what we're trying to do to protect namespaces rather than use different memory management techniques to protect processes. Uh, the, the, the object of isolation is a namespace. I'm thinking about the overhead that that think you will incur basically when switch between namespaces. Well, tagging should be managed at lower level. Uh, the the context switch is implicit because whenever you switch from process to process, you do switch to and uh, you do switch of the context, and then a page table, the kernel part of the page table of processes in different namespaces will be different. But you have the context, that context switch anyway. Okay, thank you. Mark. So at least on ARM64, we only have a single PGD for all kernel threads. Because uh, we have two base registers for page tables, one for the low half of the address space with user space that actually gets context switched and one for the high half that has the kernel in. And we only use one page table there, and we avoid lots of things like lazily faulting in the vmalloc area through that. So this sounds like this would have quite a significant overhead in our case, which we don't have today. So we won't support ARM64 initially, at least. <laughs> OK. <laughs> one questions? Thanks for the talk. Uh, some people who know Windows kernel told me uh, that uh, Windows kernel doesn't have FizzMap at all. And they, as I could understand, uh, uh, every kernel process has special mapping, uh, separate mapping for it. Is it really better design that having FizzMap for all the kernel? Linux is better, so probably it is. Uh, Linux is faster, so probably it is better. So, uh, uh, I don't know. It's making each and every process his own view of a physical memory probably not really a good idea. I know. I don't know the details. I don't know the details about how Windows works, so I can't. But is it really compare apples to apples, oranges yeah. to oranges? Uh, but but uh, what would Linux be is faster? Yes. Uh, what would be the design if we don't have this map at all? Uh, no idea. A, a, a lot of things rely on that you can get page to physical, physical to page, uh, which is the direct map, uh, like DMA, device drivers, uh, other things. I don't know. Thanks. 
More questions? Um, I have a question. I'm not sure I understood uh, correctly, but how would that work with uh, device drivers having some kind of state, uh, shared state, uh, uh, when you have a packet, for instance, uh, going somewhere and they have to manage hardware state, and then you, you switch namespace, uh, how, how would it be handled? Uh, will it be still available? On so we if I understand correctly, you have, for instance, network device drivers that creates an SK buffer that probably happens in any TMM context. And then that, that SKB will need to go to some of the namespaces. Uh, that's the question. SKB, I can understand how it would go to a namespace, but if there's other, other uh, memory allocations. Other memories that's mapped by physical device? For, for example, or uh, a, a common state? It common state between For part of a physical device in a namespace and part of the physical device outside the namespace. I don't think it's something that's possible. Okay. Uh, and in container environments, mostly physical devices live in initial namespace and the virtual devices live in the inside the namespace and they, they just communicate with each other via bridge or some other sort of SDN implementation. Okay. Thank you. No questions? Okay, if not, let's thank a speaker.